Hey, that's well, I'm sorry. I just like I I I I can't think of anyone on the top of my head. All right. We not just can... not to say there aren't. I just I just can't think of the time. So. Music news for you that you might be interested in. Um, ACDC singer Brian Johnson has been advised to stop live tours for fear of going deaf. Wow. I know. I thought that. So they've got their touring this year, and I think they've got a couple planned in London and Manchester in June. <clears throat> so they're not sure whether that's going to go ahead. Um, and I think they're going to end up bringing in a guest vocalist. So for the rest of the tour, so that's quite something, isn't it? It's like, wow, that'd be different. Yeah, but I think the doctors have literally said to him, if you don't stop, you know, you could lose your hearing altogether. Well, I thought they were wearing earpieces the whole time, but I guess not. <clears throat> some some vocalists don't like that, though, do they? No, that's true. They find it um, kind of, they just feel, it, feel it's uncomfortable. It works for some and doesn't work for others. But yeah, I thought that was quite a... A shock anyway, so... Yeah, no kidding. There you go. First Malcolm, now Brian. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, <clears throat> the other thing, David Bowie-wise, um, he's on, re what was it, World Record Store Day. There's going to be two re-releases um, of vinyls of right. his, um, and that's in April, and that's going to be Station to Station and The Man Who Sold the World. That's cool. Isn't it? I know. I thought that. So I thought you'd like that. Oh, and nice. apparently, the man who sold the world is going to have original German artwork as well. Really nice. Yeah, I know. So that's quite exciting. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, Motorhead and Metallica. Um, they're combining uh, to do one of these super group mad mass metal um, concerts. So the guitarist Phil Campbell is going to be performing with Metallica. Okay, so it's, did you say Megadeth? Um, well, it's yeah. I mean, it's a show that's going to be in London, so it's going to be a rock supergroup. So I think it's just for the sort of gig. So that's going to be interesting. Supergroup? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Not any more than not either one of them. Like you, anyway, I thought... you, you know my personal thoughts on Metallica, so I'm not going to go into that like I always do. So uh, I think pretty black album. It's great. Everything after that is just a bunch of crap. And yeah, it's not a super group. And even Megadeth, after a countdown to Extinction was done, which was they tried to compete with the Black album. So it was like, like what, 91, 92? Anyways, so after that, um, <clears throat> little by little, the band members started leaving. Their bass player, Dave Elfson, left, went into a different group. Uh, uh, Marty Friedman, their drummer, went to a different group. Uh, sorry, Marty Friedman, their guitarist, took off to Japan, actually. And their, right, and their right. drummer, Nick Menez, kind of just went off into another band. I'm not sure what he's doing now. And so David Stain had to kind of rebuild the group again. And so I just like, meh. Like, I, I, don't, I don't despise him like I do, like I do Metallica. I just like, it's not the original Megadeth. And it's all, I'll, I don't see the super group. Like, not this time around. No, that's fair enough. This is yeah. personal opinion, though. So. Yeah, no, that's cool. So, and the other thing I've got is, now this is interesting, um, because I just bought a piece of art from um, a local gallery here, and it was <clears throat> by the, um, sorry, the fashion designer, uh, Robert Carey Williams, and he's, he's a well-known sort of English fashion designer. Anyway, it was, it was first person, really. I saw it on Instagram. Right. Um, I know the owners, but it was just, I, I got in there really quick. So I've bought a piece of art, which is, for a very small amount of money, which is going to be worth something. But this fascinated me. Um, there's a, a letter that John Lennon wrote to his aunt when he was 11 years old, thanking her for Christmas presents. Nice. Um, and that's going to go off for auction, and they reckon it's going to fetch about 30 grand. I wow. mean, seriously? What do you think? No, that's that's a lot of money if, just for Larry. He wrote when he's eleven. I mean, it wasn't like it was actual lyrics. It was actual lyrics, different story. But yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I wouldn't pay that kind of money for like two. I have hundred and fifty bucks tops. Well, that's what I thought. I, I kind of, to me, I don't see the kind of. Yeah, he penned it, but well, it was way before he was. <clears throat> but that, but there, that actually. that's also what's expected to get, right? Well, yeah. So, I mean, and you know, and that doesn't always happen, right? Because, you no, know, there's a lot of like memorabilia out there, Beatles or not, that, you know, people will think it's gonna, like, it's gonna get a lot of money. 
and they may get half of what they thought they would get or even less. Yeah. And because every time you do an auction, you're taking a chance, right? And, you know, the the, the auction house is taking 20% right off the top for their fee. Well, of course, so yeah. 20% of whatever that makes, no, it doesn't matter what it is, they get 20% of it. So you could lose out and just what it was a complete waste of time. By the time you get through all the auction fees or anything else, pff, forget it. I mean, you got to be... Go ahead. No, I was going to say, for me, I can't imagine why you'd want something like that because it, it just doesn't, you know, it's a thank you letter, isn't it, from yeah. kids? Like, it, there's it's, no kind of musical, you know, if you put it in a frame, it wouldn't have, it, the only meaning it would have is for him, his family, that kind of thing, really, isn't it? And I don't know, I just think it's, but, you know, people want a piece of fame, don't they, I suppose? Yeah, so but, the way they can but, get even, it, but even that, I just, no, I just don't, I don't see it as like, I know. I just mean though. I, I but yeah, that that that's that's cool, but not 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 thirty grand cool, you know. No, that's right. <laughs> so. <laughs> hey hey. <laughs> so um, should we get to another track then? Sure, why not? Well, next up, we're gonna get to another heavy ball song. Okay. And this one's called Automatic Hit Machine. Dig this. That would be cool though. Song began, you were quite a man. You'd sing angels every Friday night. You joined up in the queue to join the chosen few. Paper moths fly to the blinding light. And they say, Oh, cinders, tell us your tale. Who've you got that's not here anymore? On the stage, pushed in the golden cage You parrot all the lines you're told to say Working for the fun to generate returns You've got the fame, now all you need's the pay And we say, oh, Rake will please take a car Show the world the progress you have made All right, that was Heavy Ball with Automatic Hit Machine. Again, another cool tune. Like I love the I love the beat to it, and the vocals were really cool, really cool with this one. Yeah, I think I mean again I, the production's really cool, um, and I yeah his vocals are great, and it's just really really catchy. I mean you can hear that commercially doing well, um, and I just I don't know I think I think it's nice to hear different sort of genres of music, you know, and they're out there Absolutely. doing it, and it's it's fantastic. Um, but they're also touring at the moment, so I know um, they're playing sort of Germany, Austria, London, um, sort of in March. So they're they're, yeah, they're was, getting out there, which is fantastic. That was so, up on their Twitter, actually. Sorry. That was up on their Twitter feed, actually. So going? I'd love to catch them live. So I'm going to have to sort of try and get them to swing 
the southwest mm. of the UK way, I think. Um, because because also it's, it, there'll be loads of people that would really love their stuff. So right. the more we get it out there, the more cool, you know, it's cool. Very true. Yeah, so have you got any other news? What else is happening? Uh, well, I guess not really news as such, but I uh, saw the movie uh, Deadpool. Oh, okay. This is the Marvel comic. Yeah. So yeah, Ryan so Reynolds. It. Yeah, it's really, really funny. I mean, it was really well done. Like, I didn't bother watching in 3D because there's no need for it. But the action was cool. It was really funny, and there's a lot. There's a there's a lot of a lot of sexual references, and like, and this, it just just trust me. Trust me, this is not a movie for a kid at all. Like, <laughs> what age is it then? Uh, it's eighteen. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, well, it's it's our. I'm just saying, like, because you know, sometimes parents, if you go, parents go with their kids, they can buy them tickets and go with them, right? Yeah, true. And a lot of kids would probably be attracted <coughs> to because of the subject yeah. matter, I guess. Exactly. But anyways, point being, like I said, it was really funny, and, and there's some there's lot, some other references in it, and it killed me because uh, you know, like, I I, I expect explained to my friend too. I went with my friend Weeby, and like, and uh, so it's, it's starting. You know, it's, the movie's going on. And at one point, they ask the, the, this guy asks him goes goes What do you think my name is? And he goes through a whole bunch. And he, has, and he says Basil Fawlty. <laughs> I, I, like, I was like, Oh, awesome, Fawlty Towers. And I look around. I was like, What? Nobody got that? Oh, really? Yeah. And, and like, and, and look, Weeby's like, Come on, no, like Monty Python, John Cleese. Like, I think so. I was like, Oh my god. Like, Funny, isn't it? God. Yeah. And yeah. then they're at. Uh, they go to uh, the X Men mansion. Yeah. And. Uh, Colossus is there, and there's this other little one, and I don't know what her name is because she didn't really give like an, uh, a name. Because he asked her, Deadpool asked, goes, "What's your name?" And she says, "Negasonic Teenage Warhead." I was like, "Oh, I think right, Monster Magnet." Like that's amazing. Like what? Nobody? Like nobody really? Like who's Monster Magnet? Who's Monster Magnet? Ah! Oh. <laughs> like. I just, I just, I'm a huge Monster Magnet fan. At least they're old stuff, and I'm talking like I'm talking before like Space War. That was just kind of like kind of mainstream. Let's try to get a, get yeah. try yourself other everything before that, like Super Judge and Dope Soon Finney, which Nick Sonic Teenage Warheads on are they're, they're fantastic albums. We're really tripped out because Dave Windor, the guitarist slash lead singer, was really, for lack of better words, effed up at the time. Right. But okay. <laughs> the music was fantastic. <laughs> it is fantastic. <laughs> So, you know, any of you think all that good music is not somewhat, not, not all of it, but majority of it is, you know, if you don't believe that, then you better stop listening to music altogether because. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll have to, I'll have to check it out then, I guess. Yes. So, I don't, I don't know if it's out over here, I, I, you know, so I don't know. But, but either, like, like I said, it was a great mood nonetheless. It was like literally funny all the way through and finally a movie that wasn't two hours. Oh. Huh? Oh, right, it's about okay. time, like an hour and forty minutes. Like this is fantastic. It's under two hours, and I mean this movie's really funny. They're like so, yeah. but like you said, funny action. It's got it all, and it's it's a great movie. Like really, wor definitely worth it. Oh, brilliant! Yeah. Well, look, as you say, I mean, there's not many comedies out there that can keep you laughing from no. beginning to end. So that's got to be worth it then. Well, it certainly is. <laughs> of course, uh, Stan Lee's in it, like he's in all his movies. And this right. and this one, he's a DJ in, in a strip club. <laughs> <laughs> they love their strip clubs, though, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> you know, in in America, I mean, most American movies have have it slipped in somewhere. It just seems to be, you know, most movies. No, fifteen no. and above. No, you've got a point. You got a point, actually. One of the things about like, you know, you know what? You're right. <laughs> I noticed black and white photography and strip clubs. Pretty much, you can say will happen. <laughs> oh, and, well, Christmas occasionally. Right. You know so that tends to be a running theme, doesn't it? They do like a bit of a Christmas tree. <laughs> no, no, <it's>, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's true as well. <laughs> so, uh, one more quick thing today. Today at work, you're really bored uh, because, like, after like I think it was like ten o'clock or so, there was like no flights. Oh, right, so not okay. to like one two o'clock, right? So, it's just. So what, so what do you do with your time then, if you if there's nothing? Sometimes we do extra training and. Oh, right. And there, there, there's different things we can do. Most of the time we stand around talking, but, <laughs> but you know, um, today we got some new chairs delivered, and the box was pretty big, big enough that me standing at <laughs> I standing six feet, I was able to get in and sit down with my legs crossed, no problem. Uh -huh. So. 
close the box back up and we waited for people to come in like people we work with come